Hello everyone, as you know, I am Paul, your eHobby guy, and in today's video, we're going to look at making this lithium-ion 18650 battery charger. It can charge two 18650 batteries independently at the same time. We're going to use two TP4056 charging modules, which protect you from overcharging. I also added this buzzer button that gives you an audible tone for when either one of these gets to full charge. I also just added a switch to turn it off if it does get annoying. We're going to look at the circuit. We're going to look at the full build. So let's jump right in. Okay, to get started, first we'll pull together all of the parts that we need. And first things first, we're going to pull out two TP4056 charging modules. These are very common and have been featured in many of my past videos. They protect against overcharging. Next on the list, I'm going to look at my box of buzzers here and pull out one active buzzer. This is just going to turn it up a notch and give me that extra audible confirmation of when something is fully charged. Next is a 100 millimeter by 60 millimeter by 25 millimeter project box. This one sells for less than a dollar. I believe I bought a pack of five. Of course, we need lithium ion batteries that we are going to be charging. So here is mine. Also, we need two lithium ion battery holders. We'll get started with the build first and then we'll get into the circuit that's going to control the buzzer. So I just took a piece of white electrical tape and placed it at the end of the project box and I have a mini USB connector here that I'm just marking with a black marker and then I'm just going to make an impression onto the end of the box so that I can machine it out and file it to size. After it was marked in place I drilled a couple of holes to hog out as much material as possible and then I filed it to size making sure to check for proper fit. Since I need two of these TP4056 modules, I'm only going to use one of them as the feed through in the project box for the power and I'm going to parallel the other one by soldering on two wires, patching the power from one module to the other. Of course, black for negative, red for positive. Of course, the red and the blue indicator LEDs on these modules won't be visible in the project box. I'm going to replace them with my own 3 millimeter LEDs. To do this I'm going to check which one is red, which one is blue, and to check which one is common, whether it's the anode or the cathode. Make a note of that so I can wire up my own LEDs. It turns out that they are common anode and the two anodes are the two pads that are closest to the edge of the board. So I heat up the solder pads of the surface mount LEDs to remove them. Once that's done I grab two red LEDs and two blue LEDs and begin by soldering extension wires right onto the pads on the module so that they can be wired into the LEDs. The LEDs would then be ready to be mounted onto the housing. Just taking a quick look at where we stand right now, this is what it looks like. We've got two LEDs attached. The power is jumped from one to the other. Now we are ready to look at our buzzer circuit. Just a quick note that all of the components in this project, a complete component list, will be pasted into the description down below. And also, this schematic will have a link in the description down below for you to download. And so, we'll do just a quick run-through of this very simple circuit that I sketched up in EasyEDA.com. We'll start out with the 5 volt DC. That's what's coming in from our mini USB. And so, we're going to parallel right off of one of the two modules that we wired up. And from that, we're going into a piezo buzzer. And to activate the piezo buzzer, I chose a P-channel MOSFET. Because the two LEDs on the charging module were common anode, the cathode was the trigger to turn the LED on. And because we're supplying a negative trigger, I chose this P-channel MOSFET. When the negative trigger comes in, it will pull this gate low and allow current to flow to the piezo buzzer. They are wired in this configuration such that if either one of, of the blue LEDs comes on, it's going to trigger the MOSFET and turn the piezo buzzer on. The 10K resistors are just pull-up resistors and the negative trigger from the charging module simply pulls the P-channel MOSFET gate low. So now that we've gone over this very basic simple circuit, let's take a look at the breadboard. So here is the circuit breadboarded. Here are the two 10K resistors. 
tied into the drain of each. They're interconnected here with the blue jumpers wired in the OR gate configuration. The left pin here on both of these is the gate. Here I have tied into the negative a trigger and so if we put a negative onto the gate of either you can see that it makes this buzzer go. And so that will be my indication that one or both of the batteries are into the charged state. So let's build this onto a board. For reference, here's a better close-up of the breadboard, just in case you want to make reference to it. To get this built onto a board, I want the profile to be as low as possible. And so with these P-channel MOSFETs, I'm just going to bend the pins over so that they lay flat, because this is going to have to go into that small project box that we chose. After getting them into place, I simply soldered them onto the board. Next, I placed the resistors on the board and soldered those into place. Where possible, I used the legs of the components as jumpers per the schematic. After that, I used jumper wires to make up the difference of those that were left. It was now time to solder on two wires onto the two gates as the triggers for the P-channel MOSFETs to make the buzzer to come on. And of course, after that, I soldered red and black wires onto the board to act as power, which are going to jump and tie into the power wires onto one of the charging modules. I trimmed off the excess and it's now ready to be soldered on to the other components. Here I am soldering on the power wires into the input 5 volt on one of the modules. Each of these blue wires have to tie into the cathode from each of the modules and so this was delicate uh, but I managed to get it done. Before I did that though, I did have to go to the switches. I only had double pole, double throw switches as opposed to single pole, single throw. And so I used one double pole, double throw instead of two switches. And then I went onto the board, the negative cathode of each LED. Now it's time to solder on the battery holders onto the charging modules. And this is quite simple. Red wire just goes to the plus, black wire to the minus one to each module. Okay, now that everything is all wired together, here we can just see the two batteries and the two battery holders. Here are the two lithium ion battery chargers. Here are the two LEDs and two other LEDs here, the circuit board that we built, and the switch. And so what we want to do right now is just bring in some 5 volt power and see how we are operating. As we can see here, here and here, We've got the two red LEDs are lit, and so these batteries are charging right now. Now, what I will do is just uh, take one out, and in doing so, we'll switch the LED from red to blue, because it won't be flowing right away. And so there's the, so there's the sound. That LED is tripping one of these two MOSFETs, turning on the buzzer. We'll look at the other one here. I'll try and do it without pushing everything out of screen. Same thing. So both of these are charging right now. Uh, we have our board, the two chargers, and our on-off switch. And a switch, let's just switch. Switch is for turning off. So it's interrupting both inputs, the triggers to the MOSFETs. And so if we just don't want to hear the noise, we can switch it on and switch it off just like that. Both are still charging. I'll disconnect the power and we'll look at getting everything, see if we can squeeze everything into this enclosure. I'm going to elevate the two batteries and try and get these boards underneath the batteries. Mount the LEDs, mount the switch and we'll see how it goes. First I want to take a look at the cover and I want to mark out two rectangles representing the two battery holders. The battery holders and the batteries are going to be elevated through the top of this cover and so I cut out these two holes. Next it's time to drill a quarter inch hole into the end that's opposite to the power connector for the mute switch and it fit quite nicely. Now I'm going to drill four one eighth inch holes or three millimeters for the four LEDs. Now it's time to glue one of the charging modules into the enclosure for the power connector and then after that glue the four LEDs in place. Here I'm just double checking that everything is still okay so I'm plugging in and I am getting two blue LEDs. Everything's good to go. 
Now we're on the home stretch. Next I can glue down the circuit board making sure to keep the buzzer centralized so that it doesn't interfere with the two battery holders. Next in order to support the battery holders I need to put support into the project box and so I found this quarter inch square wood that I cut about three and a half inches long and I'm going to stack two of these on either side so that I can glue the battery holders right to this wood to give it support and elevate the battery holders over the circuit board. After that we simply glue the battery holders directly onto the wood making sure to space out the battery holder in the box properly such that the cover can go on comfortably. Believe it or not that's the full build. Let's check it out and see if we can get things working here. I'm just going to pop in two batteries and let's plug in some power and there we go we have two batteries charging red lights indicating that they are charging while I'm waiting I'm gonna label the this end here with the switch and put this label on indicating which side is on and which side is off I just wanted to jump in right here the first battery this one right here just went into full charge I'm gonna switch the buzzer off buzzer on buzzer off and we're still waiting for the second lithium-ion battery we can get this out and we're just waiting for this one to go into full charge so that about does it for today's video I'm just going to pop another battery in here and you can see it's switched into the charging mode I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video I really hope you learned something and that you can follow along and make one of your own at home if you have any questions at all feel free to post them in the comment section down below click the circle with my picture in it to subscribe thank you for watching see you next time